Jerusalem, the city of the three most important monotheistic religions in this world, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. There is no city like that anywhere else around the world. But somehow, the system of multi-religions works here. The religious wars are no longer something big here. There is no city like that. It seems like everyone knows his place. Is it because no more one religion wants to take over the rest of the world? Or are we witnessing a silent takeover of a specific emerging global religion? It has to happen before the second coming of Jesus. Shalom everyone, this is Amir Tsarfati and I am live from our office here in Galilee. Before we start our um, prophecy roundtable with Pastor Barry and Jan Markel, I would like to uh, begin with an unusual, uh, out of the order, special update on the events of the last uh, 48 hours here in Israel. The probably most severe civilian um, um, disaster that the country has uh, known in, in probably almost 70 years as 45 people found their death in a stampede tragedy in northern Israel while they celebrated a religious um, festivity that we will talk about in a few seconds. Before we do that, allow me to start with the prayer. Father, we thank you that uh, you are in control of everything. We do not understand sometimes why things happen, but we know that you're in full control. And Father, um, this is a time with all the criticism that we may have for what they were celebrating and how they were celebrating. Uh, this is time for us to weep with those who weep. As uh, Ecclesiastics chapter 3 says, there is a time for everything under the sun. It's a, There's a time to weep and there's a time to mourn and we weep and we mourn with the rest of the nation of Israel today, as uh, um, most of the uh, victims have been already brought to their uh, burial, and uh, many will also be uh, going through that uh, this evening. Father, we pray that uh, uh, you will bring comfort, and that somehow through all of this, people will ask themselves, the big question, is that really the way the truth, and the life. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, shalom, everybody. It's Amir Tzalfati. It's a short Middle East update just to explain what happened uh, 48 hours ago as Jewish people um, in the middle of a celebration roughly at 1 a.m. on uh, April 20, uh, 30th. It was the beginning of that day on Mount Meron in, in northern Israel in a what appears to be an accident that turned into a stampede tragedy, uh, took the lives of 45 people. Now, a lot of people are asking me, what is it that the, all these hundreds of thousands of people were celebrating? Well, allow me to, to tell you that they were definitely not celebrating a, a biblical festival that we know from Leviticus 23. Let's go over the festivals from Leviticus 23, and there's seven of them, and I'll try to explain where on those seven we can find ourselves. Uh, so there is the Passover, which is the first one to celebrate, then the unleavened bread and the first fruits. And the Bible says, you shall count seven weeks for yourself from the first fruits to the Feast of Weeks. Seven weeks, 49 days. And on the 15th day, you celebrate the Feast of Shavuot, Feast of Pentecost, Feast of Weeks. These four have been already fulfilled at the time of Christ, as he was, of course, the Passover. His body was sinless, the unleavened bread. He became the first fruit from among those who fell asleep, his resurrection. And, of course, he was 40 days with the disciples, and then he told them, wait a little bit more 
to receive the one that I'm going to send to you. And that is, of course, on Pentecost. Ten more days you have to wait. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let's now try and understand. We go to Leviticus 23, and we read in Leviticus 23 those verses uh, that are describing that. It says, it shall count for yourself from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, sheaf of the wave offering in Hebrew is Omer, O-M-E-R. Seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath, and then you shall offer a new grain offering to the Lord. The counting of the Omer is the counting of those 49, 50 days, basically. Now, and of course, um, another in, in, in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, we have the same exact thing. You shall count seven weeks for yourself. Begin to count the seven weeks from the time you begin to put the sickle to the grain, basically. There's a lot of extra uh, meanings to it in, on the spiritual realm, which I don't have time to, to go into right now. But what I do want you to understand, biblically, all we needed to do is count 49 days. Now, what is uh, Lag Baomer? Lag Baomer is the celebration. Lag is the Hebrew two letters, Lamed Gimel, which are the letters for the, for the, for the number 33, which means on the 33rd day from the 49 days that they count, there was an urge for them to go and celebrate a festival. Now, these festivities, they only started, um, um, I mean, we, we, we don't find them um, more than a thousand years. Uh, in other words, Lag Baomer was not celebrated at the time of Jesus. It was not a biblical festival. You can't find it in the Old nor in the New Testament, but it became more traditional because of a specific person. And that is where the celebration were. And I'm talking about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is a rabbi who lived in the second century AD. And he uh, he lived at, you know, at the time that there was no more temple, at the time when there was the oral law that the Jews were following more so, at the time that rabbis started uh, adding more and more and more uh, commentaries um, as there is no more service in the temple. In Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, later, later on, uh, people think that the 13 years that he uh, hid himself in a cave is when uh, Elijah the prophet appeared to him, Moses appeared to him, and he wrote the book of Zohar, Radiance. The book of Zohar is a medieval... Now watch this. <laughs> Only in the 13th century this book emerged, from somewhere in Spain, but uh, the person who said that, um, you know, who brought it forth, um, basically said that it was originally written by Rabbi Shimon. And look, it's a it's a con uh, uh, is a compendium of Jewish esoteric and mystical teaching, and the basis of the Kabbalistic faith. It is, however, a notoriously difficult text in Aramaic and ancient Hebrew, full of hidden codes, concealed meanings obscure symbols, and ecstatic expression. So, so you know. So, uh, and what is, uh, and so the Zohar is, is radiance. And they take it from both Daniel chapter 12 and um, Ezekiel chapter 8, the word Zohar radiance. But I want you to know, folks, that uh, the entire premise of the whole Kabbalah is that a man can know God more intimately as he elevates himself more intellectually, and also as he has more revelation. And now <laughs> you have to understand, and you must understand that, it is basically on the premises that man can know God intimately. And that stands extremely opposite to what Isaiah 59 says. And I'm talking about the famous verses. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save, nor his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. There has been a separation between man and God for sin entered the world. And you cannot know any in any intimate way the Lord God 
without first having him dealing with the issue of sin in your life, which means before you believe in Jesus himself as the ultimate sacrifice, the atonement for your sin. And of course, when you don't believe in that, then your whole understanding of God can never be uh, any more than someone that I'm detached from. And the fact that the notion that there is a way to know God in an intimate way, and that way is esoteric and with special codes and with in, in, a, in an intellectual level that is up above and beyond you. This is now I want you to see the hundreds of thousands of people that gathered on Mount Meron. This is a picture of this is a small picture of something much bigger. They all came for one reason. They came to the place where Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is buried on the day that he died because they want to have an intimate relationship with God. They come to the man or to the burial site of the man whom they think reveal the secrets of how to get intimate with God. It's sad because on one hand, it warms my heart to see how, my, how many of them wants to be intimate with God. It's sad to see that they don't know the way. And what happened is that they went to that uh, big compound. Take a look at this compound, the picture of the compound. You can see it's a huge thing. And uh, there was a main stage. There was a lot of uh, performances and they were dancing and they were happy. But then they were on their way to the area of uh, lighting the fire within the, 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 the compound. And you see the area of the stampede basically there was a ramp where some of them slipped and fell and the rest of them were just walking on them because there were so many. In fact, let me show you what it looked like. Okay, that's that's the, the narrow passage where they were all walking. And when the first people stumble and fell, all the rest of them kept going and they just stampeded. And you look at look at all the bodies there. We've got a video. I'm not sure we can show it. Let me see if I can show it to you. So you understand tragic, tragic, tragic thing. The tragedy is double. A, that there's so many of them that um, really want to know God intimate, intimate, in, in an intimate way, and they just uh, don't know how. And the second thing is, the tragedy is also that they came from all over the world. There were Americans, Canadians, South Africans, and of course Israelis of all ages. Well, the, those victims were from nine years old, 12, 14, 16, all the way to 40, 50, and 60 years old. All of them want to know God in a more intimate way. So the, 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 the sad thing is that they have been brainwashed to think that there is a secret and code, uh, secret esoteric, secret um, um, way to to become more intimate with God, and that is completely detached from the scriptures. See, the Kabbalah that came out of this whole thing uh, did not exist in the time of Paul. But the, the, the teaching of the rabbis that were all based on the oral law and not on the written word of God were already there. And that uh, brings me to how the heart that Paul had for his people. In Romans chapter 9, you see something. And it, you need to understand, Paul, Paul was kicked out of synagogues. He was brutally attacked by Jewish people when he was in, in uh, some places in Thessaloniki and uh, also in, uh, um, uh, in, in other cities in Greece and in my, Asia Minor. Paul suffered a lot from, from that religious spirit. 
But Paul had a heart for his people. When you have the love of Jesus in you, then you not only love the church, you do not only love your brothers and sisters in faith, but you love your nation, you love your people, the unbelievers, those who are in the dark. And look what Paul wrote in the ninth chapter to the Romans. He wrote the following thing. He says, I tell you the truth in Christ, I'm not lying, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises, of whom are the fathers, and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, who is over all the externally, the eternally blessed God. Amen. Paul said, if I could save them, even by me being a curse from Christ, I, I would. But you cannot believe for someone else. You can pray for him, but you cannot believe for him. And you cannot be saved for him. And Paul had a broken heart for his nation. He kept praying for them until the very end. Until the very end, the last chapter of the book of Acts, he said, it is for the hope of Israel that I am bound in those chains. And the last verse before we move on that I wanted to share with you is from Philippians chapter 3. He says, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish. He said, All the, all the knowledge I have, all the rabbinical knowledge, all the oral law, the sentences, the stories, the traditions, I count it all as rubbish, he says. And let's continue. He said, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but the, that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. You, know, you want to be intimate with God? This is it. I may know him in the of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, which by any means I may obtain the resurrection of his death. That's the reason to be successful in the music of his people. If the people that are going to be redempted in heaven, why don't we pray for the salvation of the Jews? Now we don't want them to go, we don't want many to have to go to the tribulation because eventually the tribulation is going to reach the salvation. But unfortunately, two thirds of Israel will not be able to. Provide that. And so, my, you know, it, we all need to have that heart for the pain for Israel. I think it's the best way to move now to, to our discussion. So, I want to invite the Pastor Barry Stagner and Jan Markel. Um, uh, shalom, uh, Pastor Barry, and Shalom, Jan. How are you guys? Shalom, shalom. doing you. great. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Well, I, I think that uh, there could have not been a better way to. Uh, to start a roundtable um, um, regarding anti-Semitism in the church in these last days. Um, and um, we all experience that in different shapes and forms. Unfortunately, as a Jew, and I know Jan as a Jew also, you, you know, it, it sometimes hurts a little bit more, but um, I, I can tell you that uh, I see it on so many different levels, the spiritual, the political, the, the social, the, uh, the mental. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, Jan, where do you see anti-Semitism in the church nowadays? Well, I would see it in some theologies that we can reference. I mean, I almost do, need to do a program on these theologies. The theology of amillennialism is going to be uh, emphasizing replacement theology. The church is the new Israel. The theology of dominionism is going to be emphasizing replacement theology, preterism, um, and, and, and getting into what all these theologies are right now may not be practical. But I think 
when it really entered the church, it entered the church through Augustine, which then infected the Catholic Church, and that's centuries ago. And then in the 1500s, with uh, through Martin Luther, the things Martin Luther said about the Jews. If we had time, I'd read a paragraph, but it's just shocking. I'm doing a radio program this weekend with Dave Reagan on these very issues, and David writes about the things Martin Luther said about the Jews. I mean, he literally incited people back in the 1500s to round up the Jews, put them in synagogues, and light the synagogue afire. That's Martin Luther in his later years, which which um, it's just hard to wrap our brain around. So I think the theologies are important to understand that anything other than what we believe, which is dispensationalism, which uh, loves the Jew and sees the end time role for the Jew, the other theologies are going to be problematic. So I think the first thing is to consider the theology. And then we have some, some events, and we can talk about them if we have time. We've got Christ at the checkpoint, which is supposedly put on by Christians, and I'd like to say a word about that later. Hope for the Holy Land, I was at that activity 10 years ago, put on by Christians. So-called Christian Palestinianism. Um, so these are things that have infected the church and really... Um, are causing huge anti-Semitic sentiment in the church, which I think is our emphasis. Yes. Yeah, Barry, where do you find anti-Semitism in our church nowadays? Well, Amir, if I could uh, comment, you know, about the videos that you just showed. The first thing I noticed was how many Orthodox were present. And, you know, this, as you said, was a Kabbalist type of event. And what this points me back to is the importance of what Jan was saying, and that is the interpretation of Scripture. It matters what we believe about the written Word of God. And when you've got a group who bind the Word of God on their head and on their hand and their little leather boxes, their phylacteries, uh, which is basically a misunderstanding of the Shema in Deuteronomy chapter 6, that's a figurative statement that God wants His Word to govern our thoughts, His Word to direct our hands, are going out and are coming in, are laying down and rising up. And when you start with something that's defective in your interpretation, you're going to wind up a long way away uh, from what God actually intended. And that's what all of this anti-Semitism we see today is uh, the manifestation of. It's a mishandling of Scripture. And I think you know, it's important to break this down into two basic categories. You have ethnic anti-Semitism, a hatred of a racial group. And then you have spiritual anti-Semitism, which are some of the things Jan was pointing out. Uh, all the uh, reform theology teachers that hold to replacement theology, even though they call it something different, they say they're not replacement theologists. They say that they are fulfillment theologists, that God's finished with the Jews. He didn't kick them to the curb, so to speak, but rather he finished what he was going to do through them. And again, this becomes problematic. And the problem is it leaves major portions of the Old Testament written about the modern day state of Israel unfulfilled. And therefore that classifies the Bible as errant instead of inerrant. And if that's true, then we're all in big trouble. So this is a major issue. And remember, uh, anti means against or instead of. That's what the Antichrist is. Right. He's against Christ or he's instead of Christ. So here we've got uh, the church instead of the Jews. You know, here we've got another group that is against the Jews uh, ethnically, and we're seeing these manifestations, sadly, within the church today under both of those banners. Some uh, don't see Israel as an ethnic people group having any right to the land that they uh, were given by God as an everlasting covenant uh, with the land and the people. And then others see them as uh, having spiritually violated uh, what God had ordained them for, uh, to do, so they uh, practice spiritual anti-Semitism through, yeah. you know, these things we mentioned a moment ago. Yeah, I must say, and I know that what I'm about to say is a little unorthodox, but I must say that one of the main reasons there is anti or anti-Semitic notion in the church is um, the lack of balance of Christians to uh, to understand the place of Israel in the Scriptures, uh, to the point that either you hate them 
because you think or, or you think that God is done with them. Or you can even suggest that they have a separate um, uh, yes. co uh, covenant with God that they don't really need Jesus. Right. And they walk and they walk on clouds and they're perfect. They walk right. on water whatever, and they're everything is perfect and nothing, nothing that can that they can ever do will be wrong. Now, now watch this, uh, Barry and Jan. You know, I've seen enough pastors that are falling on that worship of Israel. Um, uh, trap, and, and that is another problem because when when a, a Christian can see that uh, somebody uh, suggests that Israel they don't need Christ, um, then wait a minute. I thought Christ is the only way to truth and life. How come for me I need Him and for them they don't need Him? And not only that, um, you, you see, I also see in many ways. Um, Christians that are um, kind of buying into the old conspiracy theories of a Jewish plot to take mm -hmm. over the entire world. Unfortunately, I must say I was exposed to that while I was watching some YouTube uh, channels that supposedly bring news from Israel. But they don't bring news from Israel. They bring conspiracy theories yes. that are not based on yes. any biblical truth, and they are they're sensationalists, and they are conspiratories. And 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 the the, the, the sad thing is that they claim to be news from Israel. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and I saw horrible things. Them they blame Israel for the coronavirus. Now they blame Israel for the vaccine. They blame Israel for every problem that is there on planet Earth. The Jews want the virus to go over. The Jews want to take over the world through that. And, you know, all of that I see also in, in some, you know, QAnon uh, yeah. followers. And it's very, very sad to see that because these people profess to be Christians. They always put bring some verses and then when they talk about Israel, oh, these are not the real Israel. Those are yes. Kazarian, Kazarian mafia. Yes. They I mean, come on, uh, tell that to my grandparents uh, because Hitler didn't think that they are the Kazarian mafia. And yeah, he killed exactly. them. All of that is the excuse to feel exclusive and that others are, you know, uh, are, are below you. And uh, it is exactly the same problem that Israel has. When the Jewish people think that they are above the rest and they put down others because of their faith, um, a, you know, you would expect a Christian who knows better to not do that because his eyes were open. He knows the truth. He knows that they are blind. He knows that his eyes were open from that. And why do you now hold the exact same attitude Mm -hmm. Or I am better, <laughs> and it's about me. And then, so my point is very clear: uh, we have to stick, like you guys said, to the scriptures, and be very careful not to fall into sensationalism, and to conspiratory attitude, and um, hatreds of the Jews. I I strongly believe that if you hate the Jews, if you are a Jew hater, I don't see how you can be saved. Unfortunately. Uh, that's. I mean, th this is how it is. I, uh, how can you love that which God hates and hate that which God loves? And how uh, the Bible says in First John, chapter, uh, chapter four, verse twenty, says the following thing: If somebody says, "I love God and hates his brother," he's a liar. Mm -hmm. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Guys, uh, anti-Semites are. They need Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know him. If you know Jesus, you cannot hate Israel. You just cannot. You will weep for them. You will mourn for them. You will you will have continual grief in your heart, as Paul expressed in Romans 9, but you will not hate them. Uh, Amir, in some cases, and I'm thinking now of, of for instance, this Rick Wiles, who's come against me a lot, um, and when when President Trump was going through so much <laughs> attack, he called that a Jew coup. 
But a man like that would say he's not coming so much against Jews as he's coming against Zionists um, and, and the whole Zionist movement and things like that. So I, I think we need to clarify that sometimes these people really hate the whole move of the of, of the recreation of the nation of Israel and what, all, what that entails in scripture. Um, so maybe they, as, more than they hate the Jews. They hate the fig tree coming back to Liberia. Yes. You, just, you just mentioned that as the most important sign of the end times, haven't you? That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And Amir, let me say something about what you shared a moment ago and do a little doctrinal housekeeping. For those who are watching out there, Amir is not saying that uh, you need to add a love of Israel to the blood of Jesus in order to be saved. What he's saying is that a love for Israel is going to be part of the new creation that you become uh, once you're born again exclusively through the blood of Jesus Christ and have the Holy Spirit in you. Absolutely. You know, Jesus said in John 14 that when the Spirit comes, he's going to call to remembrance the things that Jesus said, and he is going to be our helper. He's going to teach us all things. And what we need to realize is that because the Holy Spirit is the author of the whole Bible, according to uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, and he is a, a member of the triune Godhead, that the words of Jesus and the words of the Holy Spirit are equal in authority. And therefore, if the Holy Spirit said something in the Old Testament, it's just as, as powerful and authoritative as the words of Jesus that were spoken in the New Testament. And the Holy Spirit wrote throughout the whole of the Old Testament that God has an everlasting covenant that he has established with right. the children of Israel and with the land that he apportioned to them and gave them very specific geographic markers as to where they would dwell on the surface of the earth. Besides the fact, Amir, I mean, come on, where's Jesus coming back to? Where are his feet going to step down uh, when he comes back the second time, oh, and we're going to no, step down on the Mount of Olives. Oh, he's coming back oh. to reign in Jerusalem. I mean, if he's done with Israel, then why is he coming back to Israel the second time when they look upon him whom they pierced and mourn for him as one mourns for an only son? Yeah. Loving Israel is like getting out of bed uh, when you're a born-again believer because we have the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, I would be very, very careful. And what you mentioned earlier, let me just clarify it. Uh, it's called dual covenant theology. Yes. And it is spiritual anti-Semitism to say yes. that the Jews can go to heaven apart from a personal relationship with Jesus is basically condemning them to hell by teaching them to believe that because you cannot go to heaven apart from Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one, no Jew, no Greek, comes to the Father except through Jesus. So this is, this is an act of violence against the Jews to say you can be saved without a personal relationship Absolutely. with the Jews. Absolutely. And you know, Barry, a pastor that is teaching that, when he comes to Israel, he ignores the local believers here mm -hmm. because actually they are annoying him. Why? Because he, he wants to tell all the Jewish people here that, that it's okay. They really don't need Jesus. While we, the body of Christ in Israel, are trying to reach out to the Jews by mm -hmm. saying that there is no other way but Jesus. And uh, then elegantly we're being ignored by him. Now, I want to make it very, I want to make it very, very clear. Um, you know, Barry and Jan, when I started doing ministry in, when I, I was 25 years old, my son was born. He was three months old when I did my first ministry tour, and that was to the Philippines. And that's the tour where I nearly got killed in a horrific car accident that left injuries in my lower back and uh, a, a traumatic experience that I suffer from up until today. And you guys know that. I, I, it's hard for me to sit in a passenger seat in the front because I always think that there's an accident coming. Yeah. Um, but um, but the problem is, uh, I, I remember that when I traveled, the Lord spoke to me and he said, wherever you go, you will know it by the way they teach on Israel if they are okay with the rest of their biblical uh, interpretation. 
Uh, because the minute you are wrong about Israel, can you imagine how wrong you are on so many other issues? I mean, Israel is, mm -hmm. is such, a, such a central part in the scriptures. And if you got that one wrong, how much more you get everything else? And then, then you get the whole end time scenario wrong, to, or you just completely ignore it. And that is, of course, very, very, very sad. Now, let's face it, the most important uh, the most important prophetic sign of the end times is the uh, resurrection of the Jewish nation back right. to the land. And uh, it's very, very interesting because that the word Zionist is Zion. Zion is, is the name of Israel. And Zionist is someone who believes in the right of the Jews over the land. Yes. Every Christian who believes in the right of Israel on, over their land is a Zionist. <laughs> Why do you think they hate Zionism so much? Because Zionism is the right of the Jewish people over the land. And the minute you label it as something bad, you invite all the others to claim ownership over the land. And uh, you actually make the claim of the Jews over the land as a crime by itself. I'm a proud Zionist. I believe every Christian should be a very proud Zionist. Yes. Not because not because of anything but the word of God. God is the one who said, I will bring them back to their land. I, the Lord, have promised it and I will I performed it. He says, God says, look, no one is going to help you from the ashes of the Holocaust. I will bring you. I will heal the land. I will prosper the land. I will physically bring them back to their land. And I will first of all restore them physically, and then I will restore them spiritually, he That's said. Right. And uh, if you have a problem with that, you've got a problem with the Bible, not a problem with Zionism or Zionist or all of that. You need to get saved. You need to know the Lord. You need to know the scriptures. You need to know the word of God, the plan of God, and the son of God. Because Jesus said, you will not see me, Jerusalem. Again, until you, you say, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. He didn't say you will welcome me in Arabic because I'm one of your prophets. He didn't say you will welcome me in Latin because I am the head of the Catholic Church. He, he said, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. That's what you need to say. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And that is what the Jewish people will say when he will return uh, and establish his throne in Jerusalem. Guys, um, I think that uh, we covered quite a lot. It's time to bring Pastor Mike Golay to our round table. And Mike, you have a lot of questions in the forum already. So go ahead and take over, please. Yes, so here are the parameters for all of you who are just joining us. We take any question related to anti-Semitism, and we will be asking the panel those questions. They're going to be sent to me from the forum. So that's where you need to post your questions. And then we will ask. Um, the first question I have here is for you, Jan. And that is, as an American uh, Jew, how do you feel about the events happening in Israel with this whole tragedy as an American Jew? Well, it breaks my heart. And I appreciated uh, Amir's kind of spin on it in the explanation and the videos and all very, very helpful. Um, I My hunch is most viewers don't even know what this holiday is, which again, appreciated Amir's explanation of it. But mm -hmm. I think the thing that stands out to me and Amir brought it out too, is, is how much these particular Jews want to be close to God. And of course, how far away they are because they don't know Jesus Christ. And that gets back to the responsibility of the church and of the Christian to be sharing our faith have, wherever it's possible uh, with the Jewish people. Again, we talk about dual covenant theology, and that says they don't need to be saved because they're God's chosen people. They automatically go to heaven. Um, so to me, that's a terrible form of anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. uh, the dual covenant theology. But then I'm going back, because I raised it a few minutes ago, I'm going back to Christians gathering together. For instance, every other year they get together in Bethlehem. It's called Christ at the Checkpoint, and you've got right. Christian leaders. You've got Lynn Hybels there. 
You've got Hank Hanegraaff there. You've got Gary Burge there. You've got a number of other so-called evangelicals, and that word I think is misused, in, at least in this case. You've got May Cannon there, uh, who used to be with World Vision, now she has her own ministry, and, and many, many more from the evangelical world coming together and slamming and propagandizing against the Jewish people and the nation of Israel in the name of Jesus. Um, and they all get together and I've, I've watched it online and it's stunning. They were to meet in June of 2021. Um, I, I'm not, I think in Israel and, and they would call it in Bethlehem, Palestine, they would say is where they, they're going to, but it was canceled now because of COVID. Um, and then I was a pre, I was present at Hope for the Holy Land at Bethel College, where again, Lynn Hybels, May Cannon, Sammy Awad, all gathered to, and, and, and the Bethel students and the president of Bethel University all got together for an hour and a half of propagandizing against the Jewish people. They don't deserve the, the promised land. It doesn't belong. It belongs to the Palestinians. Again, this all in the name of, of evangelical Christianity. Wow. So we are sliding down a slippery slope that is dangerous because this ultimately, this is why Hitler came to power because the Christians of Hitler's day bought into the things we're talking about. Wow. That's very concerning, Jan. Uh, did you, did I hear you say Bethel University of St. Paul, Minnesota? I graduated. I graduated from there when it was stable, but today it's pro-Palestinian. <clears throat> wow. That's very disturbing. Um, Pastor Barry, as an American as well, some of these questions are coming in for you Americans here. Why are American leaders so tolerant of anti-Semitism when you consider we were right there with the Jews in World War II? I mean, how do you, what, what's going on in our politics, Pastor? Well, I think the, the underlying cause is globalism and looking at the shift that's taken in mainstream thinking uh, in recent years, you know, the pressures of what the world wants are really driving the bus, so to speak, politically uh, in, you know, the, the alleged deep thinkers of our day. And, you know, when you've got a country that's moved away from God, uh, you're going to find this manifested in your interpretation of political matters, in your mm -hmm. geopolitical stance in the rest of the world, certainly your understanding of the nation of Israel and their role in uh you know, really the last day scenario. And, th and that all that contributes to where we are today. It's heartbreaking. And uh, Mike, I think that the main thing that, that really troubles me is that all this is based on ignorance. And it's a willful ignorance because it's a lack of investigation into what the facts really are. You know, if you go to uh, any uh, Muslim imam uh, who actually is a true student of what it is that they believe, they'll be the first to tell you that the Palestinians are nothing less than Syrian Arabs. There's no such people group right. as the Palestinians. They have no right to or association with the land of the Jews. The Quran says that the land of Moses belongs to the Jewish people, doesn't belong to the Palestinians, doesn't belong to the Arab peoples. And yet here you've got this massive ignorance in the United Nothing and other groups around the world that have a, a collective voice like the EU. And, you know, they're, they're all fighting anti-Semitism within their own borders. But it's just a massive ignorance of facts uh, that's, that's manifesting itself in literally every aspect of life, where the world is headed, uh, Israel's role, how close we are uh, to the rapture of the church, the following tribulation, and the second coming of Jesus because the fig tree is budded. All of these things leads us or leaves us with a world that is basically being directed by ignorant people. And, yeah. um, you know, sadly, there's a lot of smart people that are really ignorant. And I'm not calling these people stupid. I'm calling them ignorant <laughs> because that's what they are. Uh, yeah. They're unaware of what actual facts are. And here we've got all these gender issues and, and things that deny science and biology and also the spiritual things we're seeing today. It's a tragic uh, time in the world. But we ought to be looking for that uh, blessed hope, that glorious appearing of our yes. great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, any um, moment now. Yeah. 
Amen. Mike, yeah. um, I, I, can I say something? Yeah, um, I, I want to address the fact that, um, unfortunately, in America, there is so much um, deception going on that they call good evil and evil good. What do I mean? The 45th president was accused for being an anti-Semite, although mm -hmm. his son-in-law is Jewish, his daughter is Jewish now. <laughs> and uh, not only that, but he did more for Israel's security, safety, yeah, and yeah. uh, and well-being than any other president in the history of the United States. Right. So there stands a president that did so much for Israel, and he was accused for being an anti-Semite. And, and then there are those that are claiming that uh, it's a Jew coup that basically uh, was again, plotted against him. And then the problem, Mike, is that when you take people such as the Rothschilds and others and you emphasize their Jewish roots, mm -hmm. then it's manipulative and deceptive. Why? Because they don't count themselves like that. They are globalists who are looking at things from a complete different perspective. They could care less about this religion or that religion. For them, religion is just a tool to be able to control people. You, you need to understand that um, the globalist cabal is much bigger than just this Jewish family or that one. It's bigger than that. And there's more non-Jewish families there than the Jewish families there, just so you know. But my point is this, when you start emphasizing only the Jewish people, then it you create a false narrative as if it's a Jewish plot. Okay. Um, and then what you do, you go to the American political system now and you see some of the leaders of the Democratic Party that are Jewish, and you see, look what they do, okay? But at the same time, you ignore the fact there is a huge portion in that party now that is super anti-Semitic um, and is very jihadist also. Um, let's face it. <laughs> uh, we all know what I'm talking about. So my point is this. You know, if there was someone who was pro-Israel, pro-Jewish, and did things the right way, it was the 45th president. Yes. And um, and I will forever be grateful for, for what has been done for us. And uh, unfortunately, things did not end up the way I wish they would, but you know, mm -hmm. God, is in, God is in full control. And even what is happening now is um, Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not concerned a bit, but... Uh, what I'm trying to say is deception, deception, deception. And it's the only way you can understand what the truth is, is not if you watch TV and not if you watch YouTube and not if you're all day on Facebook, but if you are more in the Bible. If you are in the scriptures, you understand the future of Israel. If you're in the scripture, you understand the heart of God for Israel. If you're in the scriptures, you understand the heart of Jesus for Israel. If you're in the scriptures, you understand that God is not done with Israel. And if yeah. you're in the scriptures, you know that Israel will one day come to faith in him and will be saved, as Romans 11 said. So you must be in the scriptures to get the right picture and stay away from those channels and those propagandas and sensationalists that are telling you all the other things, because that's the problem. People are, are illiterate when it comes to the Bible, yeah, yeah. but they know everything about everything. They are all medical professors and doctors. They know everything about everything because they watch YouTubes. Yeah. yeah. Let's be a little bit more humble. Yeah, That's Amir, I got summary. an email. Good uh, summary. Yeah, Amir, I got an email from somebody that had a list of quotes from the Talmud and the Zohar, just, just as you referred to the Zohar earlier, saying that uh, Jews should kill Christians. And I looked these up and not a single one was true. Somebody had cooked it from the social media world, just to your point, very sad. And then it just increases anti-Semitism as if the Jews hate Christians. Now, Jan, Annalise makes this very good question. People in the forum generally really don't want to be anti-Semites. They're looking for some guidance. And so I'm going to ask you, Jan, Annalise says, how can we as Christians make people see that loving the Jewish people is loving God the Father. I mean, they're they're looking for practical advice. I mean, do you have anything that comes to your mind? Uh, to give? 
was Jesus Jewish or not? Hello. I mean, <laughs> okay. I, I, do we need to go any further than that? We serve a Jewish wow. Messiah who ruled and reigned, um, or who wow. uh, uh, mm. came uh, came to being in Israel, who's going to rule and reign out of Jerusalem, not Oslo, Norway, and not Chicago, uh, Chicago, Illinois, but Jerusalem. Everything about Jesus and everything about the Bible is uh, Jerusalem and is Jewish centric. And to me, that's all that needs to be said. The millennial, the millennial reign is going to be focused on, on Jerusalem and Israel mm -hmm. and, the, and the, the whole Middle East and all that territory that was originally promised to Israel going to be granted in the millennial kingdom. So it's a Jewish Bible. <laughs> it's, a, it's how odd of God to choose the Jews, but not so odd as those who choose the Jewish God, but spurn the Jews, and I think that's what we're talking about. God chose them. It's Christian, some, not those participating today, but some so-called Christians who come along and spurn the Jews, and it's unthinkable. It's unthinkable when you really put your mind to it. Yeah, uh, Pastor Barry, uh, very well put, Jan. Pastor Barry, here's a tough one. Samantha brings this to the table. And I know that you and Amir were commenting on anti-Semitism and having no room for the believer in for, for that in a believer's heart. She says these so-called evangelical Christians who are anti-Semitic and anti-Zionist as well, are they apostate? And yeah. will this increase in the last days if they yes. are? We want to know. Sorry. We we really want to know, please. <laughs> Barry, the pressure's on. Did you, you. say that's for Amir? That a question for Amir? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I would love to hear your thoughts on this as well, Amir, and even, and Jan too. I mean, this is a big want, question. Yeah, but Barry, question. would you would you elaborate well, on it, please? Sure. And you know, it goes back to what we talked about earlier in the Holy Spirit. You know, there are certain things that the the Spirit of God is not going to teach us, and He is going to teach us things that are consistent with His Word. And this is the danger of the ignorance I was talking about before that Amir alluded to. If you don't know the book, you're not going to know what's going on in the world and why certain people are acting in certain ways in these last days. And yes, absolutely, this is part of the defection from truth because, as Jan pointed out, this is uh, a Jewish Bible. And, you know, the authors were Jews, uh, save uh, Luke and, uh, you know, the whole of the Old Testament all the history of Israel, the future of Israel, all the things that we study uh, are centered as Arnold Fruchtebaum uh, wrote a book called Israelology, The Missing Link in Systematic Theology. And really everything, especially regarding the last days, rotates around the nation of Israel. You know, as far as uh, I think the question then becomes uh, as far as somebody being saved or, or not, first of all, that's not up to us. We don't make that a determination. And there are people who love God who make mistakes, who have wrong interpretations. But to say this is what the Bible teaches, uh, there I think you've crossed the line because the Bible does not teach that God has cast off his people forever. And as we talked about earlier, as Jan just mentioned, the millennium is going to be headquartered in Jerusalem. Jesus is returning not to Mount Baldy in Southern California or Mount Kilimanjaro. He's returning to the Mount of olives in Israel. Everything is central to the nation of Israel as it, as it uh, uh, pertains to eschatology. So, you know, again, there are certain things that the Holy Spirit is not going to teach us. And any of those things certainly would fall under the heading of conflicting with the written word of God. So, you know, I that's not for me to make a determination. That's not for any other human being to say what's going on in the heart of a person. But we also know that we're called a fruit inspect. And I don't think anti-Semitism is a fruit huh. in the life of a born-again believer. Yeah, Amen. Absolutely. Good way yeah, of putting it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, Mike, could I just add that I, I, I think what made an impact a number of years ago, would have been about 2004 or five. Uh, Yasser Arafat tapped into all of this. And, and he was lowered down, I believe, on the, maybe to the roof of the Church of the Nativity. I think that was supposed to be the second coming. Um, he he um, said that Jesus is a, is a Palestinian, not a Jew. He influenced, he, ha he had charisma, uh, sadly demonic charisma. 
and he influenced a lot of denominations, heavily the liberal denominations, um, perhaps Reformed theology, which is not kind to end times or Israel. Um, but I remember when he did that, and you know he's lowered from a helicopter onto the roof, the second coming apparently, and and his message was Jesus was a Palestinian, not a Jew, and people bought into that. Believe it, you talk about end time delusion. Uh, good people bought into that, and deceived people bought into that. Yeah, you know, Pastor uh, or Reverend Jeremiah Wright, um, yes. in a rally in Washington D.C., said the, said the, the same thing. He said Jesus was a Palestinian. And, you know, Mike, I've read the Bible quite a few times, and I really searched hard to find the Palestinian background of Jesus. And I couldn't find not only that he was circumcised on the eighth day and that it was he, he was brought to the temple to be and he was held by a priest there in the temple of, of the Jewish people. Not only that he's of the tribe of Judah, he's the lion of the tribe of yes. Judah. Not only that by the way, Mike, make no mistake, Mike, hmm. that when the angel told Joseph and Mary to come back from Egypt, the angel said, take the kid and go back to the land of Israel. That's what the Greek and, of course, the Hebrew translation are. Go back to the land of Israel. The name Palestine only came to the world in the second century by Adrian, the, the Caesar who... Yeah, it wasn't there in the first century. <laughs> Palestine, it's not in the Bible. Not in the it's, exactly. It's now. It's the, 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 there is the land of the Philistines. The, all of that, but Palestinians and Palestine, they that does not exist in the time of the Bible, and it's not in the scriptures. But if any, no, because a lot of people say, well, the Old Testament, it's Israel, New Testament, Jesus, or it's Palestine. No, it's not. The fact that some people in the back of your Bible said Palestine in the time of Jesus on one of the maps is because this is an ancient map. And the map goes back to before 1948 when the land was still called Palestine because yeah. that's how they call it for, uh, I don't know, for, uh, 1800 years. But that doesn't change the fact that the biblical name was, is, and will remain Israel. And, uh, and this is why... Remember in Psalm 83, when, when all of those nations came up against us to utterly destroy us on 1948, it is that the name of Israel will be remembered no more. They had a problem with David Ben-Gurion's proclamation of the name Israel back to the land. I mean, th that was revolutionary. If David Ben-Gurion would have called it Palestine or some Timbuktu, they would have not done anything. That really angered the enemy. <laughs> the enemy didn't like the fact that the name of Israel is being remembered again. Okay. And, and, and so there's so much evil going on around it and so much satanic, diabolic deception. And unfortunately, Christians of all people who should know the scriptures because not only that they've got both Old and New Testament, but they've got the Holy Spirit. Look, without, yes. the, Holy, of course. without the Holy Spirit... You can have the Bible. You can have 10 volumes of the Bible. You can have 50 copies of the Bible. Without the Holy Spirit, you will never understand what no, God no. wants. Yeah, but no. Christians of all people have the Holy Spirit. And if, when you have the Holy Spirit and you've got the Word of God, how can you of all people not see the heart of God, the Word of God, the promises of God? How can you be so ignorant and then separate modern days Israel from from biblical promises that were given to Israel in the times of the prophets and also by Jesus himself. So, you know, it's very sad, but we know the work of the enemy and yes. we know that he who is in us is greater than he who is in this world. And we know that the end times is not going to be characterized with truth being prevailing, no. but deception. it's actually deception. So, deception. Yeah. So when you see all this deception, you even more convinced how much you are at the very end. Yeah, wow, this is a boatload of information, and I'm I'm processing all of what everybody is saying here. I, I do want to recognize what Sherry says, and in the in the comments section, uh, why do you think God gave us such uh, genealogies in the Bible and history for the Jewish people? 
he knew what would happen in such a time as this, that the record had to be set straight of where the covenant line came through. I, I appreciate that, Sherry. That's kind of more of a comment than a question. Yeah. But let me jump uh, back to Jan on this one. Donna is asking for clarity, okay? My Jewish friend says they have a separate and more special relationship to God. Now, you're, you're from a Jewish background, Jan, and, 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 a, and a special understanding what non-Jews cannot because they are Jewish. They don't eat pork they, and observe other laws. It is true to say that they have a more special, is it true to say they have a more special relationship and are okay to follow Mosaic law? Being a Jew, Jan, does that give you any special connection to God? Now, Amir, you already covered a little bit about this in the intro when we talked about the tragedy. I want to hear from you, Jan, and so does um, Donna. Do you have a special connection because you're Jewish? No. Well, everybody, oh, has, that pretty quick. everybody has the same connection and it goes through Jesus Christ, whether you're, no matter what your, your heritage is, I don't, I don't think it matters. I think, um, I, I think that I have a greater burden for the issues we're talking about and for the issues related to Israel, to Jewish people, eschatology, okay. end times, um, because not only my heritage, but I've been to Israel six or seven times. And if that alone doesn't put the love of Israel into your heart, nothing will, as Amir knows. It's all the pilgrims he's taken over there. Their lives are changed. Why? Because they're in the land of the Bible. They're in the land of Jesus. They're in the land of the prophets. They're in the land of the apostles. They're in the land of the Bible. And for any Christian, I don't care what their background is, they're going to connect to all the things we're talking about, and particularly if they could get to the land. And if I could encourage one thing in our time that's running out, it is please take that trip to Israel and your life will be transformed, I promise you. I don't care what your heritage yeah. is. Even yeah. if you're a pagan, I think you'll be you'll be affected by it. <laughs> that's why we uh, call ourselves I, Behold Israel, is we want people to see yeah. the prophetic significance yeah. of what God right. is doing in that country. Amir. Uh, yeah, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 is crucial. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. You see, the fact that Israel is still here and yes. the fact that they're, they have survived all these attempts to, to destroy them and all these annihilation and, and holocaust and all of that is, is because God is still on the throne and he is the Lord and he does not change. He cannot change. You know, even if we are faithless, he is faithful because he cannot deny himself, the right. Bible says. So, so you can clearly see that Israel's existence is uh, so, so, sort of like the uh, reinsurance policy for every Christian to know that God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever, and he's a God that is keeping his covenant. And if, yes. he, if he somehow for, changes his mind about Israel, how much more he can change his mind about you? I mean, are, you, are you that great and that perfect? No. The one thing that made you perfect is Christ, the blood of Jesus, and it can make any person in the world perfect. I am working now on a message called the mystery of the Messiah, and that mystery that was kept hidden for ages, generations, from Israel also, not just from the rest of the world, from Israel. And that mystery is that God is opening the doors for all the nations from all over the world to come. And, and Israel were the forerunners. Through them, he, he brought the belief in one God. Through them, he, he brought the word of God. And through them, he brought the son of God. And now that the son of God came, now the door is open for all people to come and accept him. And there is no, in Christ, there is no Jew, no Greek in Amen. Christ. In Christ, there is no right. Jew, no Unfortunately, there are some Jewish believers that believe that they know better because they are Jews. I don't think it's biblical. <laughs> I think biblically, in Christ, there is no Jew, no Gentile. But apart from Christ, Mike, the Jews are still special for what God did, is doing, and will be doing with them. Not for anything else. The problem. And for the covenant for pro the, with absolutely. the prophecy, right? we, we just we just read Romans 9 and we understand how God is viewing them. But in Christ, the minute 
you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I am not different than you or Barry. You, you, you're not better than me. I'm not better than you. In Christ, there is no Jew and there is no Greek. And by the way, to the Jew first, maybe the blessings, but also if you read chapter 2 of Romans, also to the Jew first came the curses, the curses. and the afflictions. Uh, okay? <laughs> you get it all. You get it all it's first. It's the good thing. So let's yeah. keep that. In, in. But the replacement theology people do not want to take the curses. They only want the blessings. <laughs> exactly. They only want the blessings. Exactly. We pay no Ooh, that, attention to the curses. Wow, yeah. Jan. That's Allow a very, me. very powerful yeah. point. Allow me before we finish, Mike, if you put the, the slides that I, I kind of missed. Tomorrow, Israel will be um, marking a day of mourning. This is, uh, it, it doesn't happen that often. Israel will lower all our masts, uh, all our flags to a half mast uh, to, to remember the 45 victims uh, of uh, uh, the stampede uh, tragedy tomorrow. Uh, it's towards the end, Mike, the last few on, at the end. Uh, and you can see that exactly. Well, these are, that's a different one. That condolences pour from all over the world, Putin and Biden, but, but, but also Modi from India and, 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 and many others. Look at this, Arab, look at this. Mike, you can put it there. Arab towns offered food and drinks to the survivors and hundreds, of, if not thousands of people were donating blood in Israel. Uh, even our own prime minister uh, who came to the scene to, to be briefed uh, he went to the hospital, as you can see, and he donated blood uh, for the people. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a tragedy uh, that happened less than 48 hours ago. Um, we will remember all of them tomorrow. But please pray for the salvation of Israel. Pray for them to understand that in order to be intimate yes. with God, that you need hmm. to solve first the sin problems in, in, in your life. And that is only through the finished work and the perfect shed blood of Jesus, nothing else. And that's what Paul understood. Paul who persecuted the church, who, who brought uh, havoc and spread havoc and, and did horrible. Paul understood everything I thought I know, every tradition, every rabbinical sage, every I count it as rubbish now. And so may we all understand no, we need to pray for Israel. Yes. We, don't, we cannot hate them. We cannot uh, uh, cancel them. God is still going to do great things in them, for them, and through them. But at the same time, there is no other way but through Jesus in order to come to the, to the Lord. So we need to pray for their eyes to be open and for their salvation mm -hmm. of Israel. Mike, uh Thank you very much. Uh, thank you guys for a wonderful round table. Um, uh, Jan, if you would honor us with a prayer uh, as we conclude. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reminder that if you could forget your people Israel, you could forget the believer as well. But you're a covenant keeping, you're a covenant making God and a covenant keeping God. And you keep your covenant with your two special people, the Jew and the Christian. And um, thank you for grafting the church in. We just pray mm -hmm. you'd open their eyes to be lovers of Israel and not haters of Israel. And uh, we, <laughs> we thank you for, for the fact that many, many listening today and that will hear these words in the coming days and weeks mm -hmm do love Israel. We, we just pray their numbers increase. We pray a blessing on them for, for being a friend of the Jewish people and of the, these ministries represented here. And we ask these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Folks, um, you can find, uh, Mike, I don't know if you have all the material for Barry and Jan. You don't. Uh, you can find Jan Markel on olivetreeviews.com. Uh, Am I right? Dot org. Uh, and we're we're le we're leaving Twitter, by the way. We're we're leaving okay. Twitter. We're on Gab. Find us on Gab and Facebook right now, and Instagram. But we're All leaving right. Twitter. Pastor Barry, where can we find you? cctustin.org is the church website, and you can find me on uh, Instagram or Facebook, just under my name. Uh, YouTube as well. Yes, okay. and YouTube. Beholdisrael.org is our is our website, where you can also sign up for our newsletter every week. 
but also go to Behold Israel on, on, on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram as well. But we're on Telegram for everyday news, 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 and updates, Telegram. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Please share this to as many people as you can. Super important uh, roundtable today. Um, thank you guys for being with us. Um, and until then, shalom and God bless you shalom. from the Galilee, from Israel.